what happens to a tape lifter when it wears. It's that's a hardened piece of stainless. So for that to get that groove in there, that flat spot in there, that tape is really putting a lot of pressure on that lifter. And then fast forward and rewind over time, it wears that lifter down. Now if you look at this picture, if this is our roller bearing for our tape guide or our tape lifter, the tape will travel across there like so. And when the tape hits the bearing that's rolling, there's no friction. It's just gliding over that bearing. Now when you see something like this, that tape is coming up to there and when it hits there, instead of having a smooth transition, it's hitting a barrier that puts an awful lot of pressure on that tape. Then it goes flat and when it goes off the other side, it hits that point and there's another tremendous amount of pressure. So when that tape is going like that, you're, you're hurting the surface of the tape, even though some people may think you're not, you are. Uh, and that becomes very evident when you see how badly that tape lifter gets worn. And we'll show you a little later on um, a tape lifter, the way the normal tape lifters operate. And you'll be able to see a site that most of you have seen already on a lot of, on a lot of tape decks about the buildup that can get onto these lifters. And we're going to show you, we're going to take this head assembly off so you can see how these bearings affect the movement of the tape. Okay, one of the things that uh, we've always tried to do is make the machines better mechanically. And one of the problems um, with any tape deck with the tape lifters is they're static and the tape is getting dragged across them at a high rate of speed and fast forward and rewind and ultimately what happens is the tape lifters can get flat spots on them and the tape will start to deteriorate on the side of the tape that has the music on it. So I'll show you here what the bearings will do for you in fast forward and rewind we're going to go to play. You see all the bearings retract in play so that the tape comes in contact with the heads. Now when you go fast forward and rewind, the lifters push the tape away from the heads so you don't have tape to head contact and allows for a much smoother fast forward and rewind. The um, nice thing about the bearings is that the tape is never being dragged across those lifters. Ro the tape is rolling across the lifters, which eliminates uh, all the friction. And we'll show you on a regular machine without the lifters what's happening, and we'll show you some pictures of actual tape lifters as they wear and what actually happens with your tape. What you're looking at now is a buildup of residue on the tape lifter and this is true of all tape decks. When the tape lifters are static and that tape rubs against it and ends up uh, leaving residue on that lifter, uh, what happens is in fast forward and rewind, that residue will cause that tape to run slow. It could even stop the tape. So when you're, when you're uh, fast forward or rewinding, sometimes when the tape gets down to the very end and it's having a real tough time finishing, it's not because the motors are weak or anything like that. It's because you got all that residue on those tape lifters. Now I'm going to show you uh, here what 
normal tape lifters do without the bearings. So you can see how they operate. You can see how the tape lifters move inward to allow the tape to travel over the heads. And stop, they push the tape away. Fast forward and rewind. Same thing, it keeps that tape away from the heads. And play, it'll retract. Now the important thing to know here is when that tape gets dragged across there, even though some guys may think that, you know, it's not hurting the surface of the tape, you can see what's happening, and the surface of the tape that's hitting that lifter is the side of the tape that has the music on it. Now, on this lifter, it's the opposite. It's the back coating of the tape that runs over that. So even, even if that gets... Uh, gummed up a little bit, which it can, and the pinch roller gets gummed up a little bit. It's from the back side of the tape, not the side with the music on it. But those tape lifters, that's all the side of the tape with the music on it. So if you have the rollers like we had before, like you saw, versus this, it's real plain and easy to see that the rollers aren't going to be putting any stress on your tape. It isn't going to be wearing that tape down and it's going to let your tape transport work a lot easier because you're not dragging that tape across a static uh, tape lifter. It's a roller. So your motors are going to work easier. Everything on your uh, mechanics of your tape deck are going to work easier with the rollers. Um, our first effort a couple of years ago into making these bearings work was this method. We had parts manufactured and this was the bearing setup that we used at the beginning. Um, they worked but we had I didn't I didn't really care for them as far as far as working perfect. They had a little bit of friction in here moving in and out and the tape with two roller bearings would have a tendency now and then to ride up one way or another and come out of that groove. Now on fast forward and rewind the tape has a tendency to drift just a little. So what we did on the new style that you just saw is we changed these contraptions, didn't make those anymore, had a spring-loaded device and then we used three bearings so the tape can feel free to move in and out a little bit like it wants to and with three bearings there you never have to worry about the tape crawling up one way or another it's going to keep gliding real nice and smooth so this effort that you just saw um, on the machine running is the best that we came up with for the lifters to push that tape away from the heads and run super smooth. The new method uh, is much more improved than the original method. Okay, after a lot of thinking, we decided that um, the best way to make a good hub adapter was to have it slip onto the motor and then have a collet that would tighten down onto the shaft of the motor so that in in fact the hub adapter becomes part of the motor. Um, this will work on any tape deck that has the shaft coming out there all the hub adapter will work on any of them. Our first effort which we call series one uh, fit on and did the job perfectly and in order to tighten the collet on our series one you had to do it by hand with this knurled center tightener and you have to have these things really nice and tight 
So by doing it by hand, you had to really put a lot of pressure on it and tightening it and untightening it with your hands got to be kind of tough. And we decided at that time that our, our next generation would have to have a much easier way uh, to be user friendly, um, to put them on and off a lot easier. We did on series two, these parts here, exactly the same. All we did was we machined in that groove to give that appearance. And then the center tightener, we changed the shape of it and had a tool made that fit over the tightener so that you could manually tighten that collet uh, much, much easier on uh, the reel table and putting it on and taking it off became much, much easier. Um, when we got into Series 3, we could have done the same thing that we did here. People liked them. Uh, we could offer a variety of colors and whatnot. Um, but we thought, let's see if we can even make one better. Uh, and I think how it ended up, we've got one that's much better. This is a prototype, so it's not the actual one that you will see when you buy them. These are carbon fiber. They're super strong, super lightweight compared to the metal. So it put much less stress on the motor as it's turning. And the quality is improved dramatically uh, with the fit, the tolerances, everything else are much more improved with the carbon fiber. We're going to end up using the same tightener and spring and collet. That, that whole mechanism is going to end up being aluminum parts, the same as these because they work so well. Uh, what we're going to do on cosmetically on the new hub adapter is in this edge right here will be a slot made into there and then we'll have a, a ring a secondary ring that will push down into that slot and what that's going to enable us to do is make that outer ring any color that you want really any any color that a customer would want it could be uh, red it could be anything the center here where you see the gold J quarter logo that center we can make in uh, almost anything uh, the stock colors are going to be uh, the gold silver and we may do um, a red and a blue not completely sure yet. Uh, uh, the center spinner is either going to be black like that or it'll be silver. Um, a customer can choose then the cosmetics that they would like to go along with the machine. So you can basically custom make your your hub adapter to a great degree. Um, the color will be like the bottom, more of a blackish color than gray. And the cosmetic appeal will be um, every bit as nice as Series 2. Um, difference being the lightweight, super strong carbon fiber. The tolerances being much tighter, uh, uh, much nicer. Ultimately, we believe that this will be the best hub adapter that money can buy, period.